All right, fam. So we are back at it again with another crazy, crazy video. Okay. All right. So I done watched this video, right? And I was like, you know what? I have to bring it to my people, bro. This man said a very dangerous message. Okay. Very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Okay. Basically, this ex pastor is angry with God. And from what I've seen, I think he is an ex pastor from the other clips that I've seen of this. He is an ex pastor. At least that's allegedly he's an ex pastor. But apparently, this ex pastor done turned into an atheist. Because, bro, he said some wild, wild things. Some wild, wild west type of junk. I, I mean, bro, he. Fam, I. Woo! Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get to the video because it's crazy. Hit the like button, subscribe to no post notifications. Follow your boy on all social medias down below. Let's get it. Let's go. Yes, I am angry. I'm angry because I lived a lie for 15 years and I believed it with all my heart. I separated myself from my family, friends. I moved, relocated, disassociated myself from everyone or anyone who was not saved. I believed that I could not be unequally yoked together with non-believers. So I turned my back on good people or people who needed me. But it was for the cross's sake, right? It was for the cross's sake. Rather than fearing men, I feared the one who can cast both soul and body in that some place called hell. I took hook, line, and sinker, the false story of love called John 3.16. That's no message of love, that's a message of coercion. Twisting your arm behind your back is a message with the ultimate threat on the end of it. While it says, oh, if you believe, you'll get some cake. But if you don't, I'll burn you. Let me tell you something, every believer. Yeah, I'm mad. Because I care more about people than your God. It is just a book. It ain't real. The God of the Bible is the devil of the Bible. I don't say that to be mean. I say that because it's a fact. It ain't no such thing as a devil. I'm just using the terms that you're familiar with. It was the God of the Bible that drowned people. It was the God of the Bible that sent animals out of the woods to destroy children. It was the God of the Bible who chose to unalive all the firstborn in Egypt, even the slaves and even the firstborn of the cattle. It was the maniacal God of the Bible that did that. And then intimidating you and I so much to the degree that we would see the wickedness of the character Yahweh in the Bible and deny it and say, no, no, he wasn't wicked. No, it really is our fault. It's us. It's us. No, it's not. Do you know how many people are on the brink of suicide or have committed suicide because they battle within themselves, wondering why loving God made them the way that they uh, that he did. But yet, uh, because of how they were taught, God, you and your own word condemned me and you made me this way. Do you know how many people are miserable and terrified of the monster in the closet? They can't live their life because they fear that this wicked beast is going to destroy them because they won't find him while he's playing hide and seek. While there's no evidence that he even exists or if it's a he, it, she, they, them. We don't know. But keep in mind, this proverbial God is the one that created you and I this way. And then said... The writers, rather, said in the book that he established the end from the beginning, that none of this is done outside of his will. So here's what I want to say. First of all, to all you beautiful people out there, ain't nothing wrong with you. You weren't born in no sin, shaped in no iniquity with some death sentence on you simply because you were born. If a programmer developed a piece of software that had a virus... We would think something was wrong with that developer if we saw them going crazy over the software and stomping it, jumping up and down like say, you know, saying, what's wrong with you software? What's wrong with you? You're going to burn for this. We would think that person was crazy. You see it now, right? You beautiful person who might be gay or whatever, ain't nothing wrong with you. You live your life and you're a beautiful person. It is the Abrahamic religion that makes us mistreat people. You're great people. You're wonderful people. We just simply believe the book. And please forgive us. Forgive me because I was the same. I was the same. I was homophobic like many black men. While having loved ones who were gay. How dare you? I will be damned and refuse to lift my hands up for any idea of any type of God that would make me in sin, whatever the hell that is, make me worthy of death 
and then tell me if I don't find him in the midst of all of these claim fictitious ideas called gods, I'm going to burn for eternity. But let me tell you something. If you were real, I ain't nobody's sheep. I ain't nobody's slave. And I'm not scared of you or your idea. So if in fact that God was real, burn me. Because I'd rather be with the people, the real ones. I'll stand with them. Burn me. You want to burn me because I love more than you? That's what I would say. Do it. Because I ain't nobody's punk. And you ain't going to threaten me. And don't let nobody threaten you. For all of those that follow me, all my friends, I'm sorry. I'm sure you feel me. But I ain't sorry. And I don't know if I'm... A so at the end of the day, yes, Sean is mad. Yes, I am angry. That's what I meant when I said he said some wild, wild things, bruh. Some wild, wild things, fam. Look, I'm not here to judge. I don't know what my boy been through. I don't know what he's going through, but you could tell that man is hurt. You could tell he is. He, I mean, he, bro, he literally got tears in his eyes. Something must happen to the point where it got him feeling the way he's feeling. But Lord, forgive him for he do not know what he is doing. Okay, he does not know what he is saying. He's he's talking out of emotions. He's talking out of anger. He's not even talking in his right state of mind. God is so powerful that, bro, the fact that you was able to say all that stuff and it was able to get posted and you didn't die in a heartbeat, that's how that's how good God is. Think about it. You just blasphemy me. You just blasphemy me, God. Okay, while driving. Anything could have happened while you was driving. And yet you was able to post this video and hopefully, God willing, you made it to your destination safely. But this is what I got to say about this video. Number one, God is a true loving God. And a lot of people say, oh, you don't talk about the things that the evil things he did in the Bible and this and that. Before I say what I was going to say, let me say this. I have not read the entire Bible. Okay, I have not read the entire Bible. I only know, a, I know so much in the Bible, okay? I know so much, but it, it, it's not like I read Genesis all the way to Revelations. Like, I have not read the entire of the Bible. I just wanted to throw that out there. You know what I'm saying? But the certain things that people will consider evil that God has did in the Bible, let's look at what God did before he did what he chose to do. You know what I'm saying? Let, let's look at the prophets that he wrote that he rose up during that time to to warn the people what was to come if they didn't repent of their sins. Now, let's look at the people. God still giving everyone free will to do what they choose to do. And it's like because just look at it. God is not going to allow you into the kingdom of heaven. If you want to first, number one, live the way you want to live. Number two, if you don't want to be in the kingdom of heaven with God, why will he allow you in the kingdom of heaven? That's him forcing you. That's him literally going against your free will. Because if your free will was, look, I know, look, God, look, I'm going to be real. I want to continue to live in sin and I want to be with the devil. That's what I want for my life. If that is your free will, God is going to allow you to have your free will. But it will be people to come towards you to preach the word of God. If you're not willing to change your ways, just like back in the Old Testament where God rose up prophets to preach to the people, to let them know that, look, you need to repent and how they continue to live in their sin. So God, wrath came upon them. God is a loving God. You know why he's so loving is because he's a parent. You know what parents do? They discipline children that are disobedient. So what does God have to do? Discipline children that are disobedient. And guess what? Like I said before, God gives everyone free will. If we all follow the laws of God, if we all follow love one another, love thy, uh, love one another as you love thyself. You know what I'm saying? We all follow these simple laws. Do not murder. Do not steal. This world will be so much better off, but we don't even follow the simple, the simple laws that God has commanded us to follow. We look at those laws like, oh, I ain't finna follow those laws. God not finna do this or ain't run this and this. this. Look, God placed these laws and in order so that we can be able, so that he can protect us 
Th that's, that's really what the laws are here for is to protect us from things to come if we fall into these deep paths. So if we murder, it's to protect us from jail or from protecting us from other people to come after us because we murdered one of their people. You see what I mean? The laws is there to protect us. Don't have sex outside of marriage. This, like, people look at that and be like, oh, man, you said I can't get none. No, it's to protect you from soul ties. It's to protect you from babies outside of wedlock. It's to protect you from these things. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's truly to protect you from these things. But people go against that, then they wonder, why is my life like this? Why do I feel like this? It's because you wasn't, you're not following God. When you start to follow God and you start to follow the commandments that he set out and set out place in front of us, then you start to understand that, okay, I see why these commandments was here. It's here so that we can have peace in this life. It's here so that we can be protected from whatever's to come if we do do these things, such as Adam and Eve in the garden. He put, look, the tree was there. He said, don't eat from this tree, but he gave them the free will to do whatever they choose to do. But he said, do not eat from this tree. If you eat from this tree, you will surely die. He said that. He literally said that. What else do you have to say? He, he gave them enough knowledge to understand that, okay, we can't eat from this tree. But what Satan do? He came into the garden. He tempted the woman, Eve. Eve ate the apple. Nothing happened. Okay, she passed it on to the man who God gave the order to. What happened? All sin fell into the world. That is the basic story behind why sin is here. You know what I'm saying? So when you say, oh, the, the sin and this and that, like that's the basic, you said sin or whatever that is. First of all, bro, you know what sin is. If you was a believer in Christ, you know what sin is. But this is also people's problem is that people, they just know of God, but they don't know God. So when God doesn't meet their needs in that moment, they have anger towards God. They start to blaspheme God. They start to look, God, you this and you that and you this because God didn't say yes to everything that you wanted him to say yes to. God say no. And when God say no, like a parent will tell you no, it's because it's another door that may be open for you. You know what I'm saying? And then you talk about equally yo or being unequally yo. You said that you you turned your back on people who needed you and people that loved you. You turned your back. God didn't tell you to turn your back. Being unequally yo is simple as this. When you are unequally yo, let's say you have a Christian and you have a Muslim. If y'all both come into a relationship together, a a, a, a a relationship, like a, a relationship getting married and all that, y'all come into a relationship together. You know how hard that's going to be because you got one person who want to go to a church. You have another person who want to go to a mosque. You have one person that believes in Jesus Christ. You have one person that don't believe in Jesus Christ or that believes that Jesus Christ is just a prophet when the Christian believes that Jesus Christ is the son of God and that he is God. This is going to come into a, a argument battle. It's like it's going to be so much clashing of heads because you got Muslims who believe that, oh, we can have multiple wives or we can do this or we can do this in our marriage. And Christians believe that, no, we can do this in our marriage. It's going to be so many, so many clashing heads, bro, that y'all would never be on one, occur, uh, one accord unless y'all honestly make that work out. But. In reality, y'all won't be on one accord. That's why the Bible say be equally yoked. When you are unequally yoked with friends, if you have a friend that that is this way, and you have, you, let's say you all your friends smoke weed, drink, party, have sex outside of marriage, do all these things, and you just this Christian guy, you don't have no other people around you that's like minded like you. You only around these people. Guess what? You're gonna be a, like you're gonna be just like these people. You know why? Because you are who you hang around. That's a true statement. That is a true statement. I always said that I wasn't going to smoke weed and I don't smoke weed now. But when I was in the world or when I first gave my life to Christ, I was around people who were smoking weed and I never I didn't have like minded people around me. So I only had people around me that was smoking weed, that was cussing, that was drinking, that was having sex, that was doing all the different things. And I, I didn't go to church. I didn't have none. All I did was do online church on a Sunday. And that's it. Monday through Saturday, I was around people who who literally will live whatever way they want to live. And that's what I end up becoming. I end up smoking weed for the first time. I, you know what I'm saying? I end up doing these things. I end up lusting over these women because my my cousins and my friends, they, they talking about how thick these women is and this and that. So now I'm lusting over women because I don't have that like-minded people around me. I'm not equally yoked around... I'm not equally yoked with people that's around me. You feel me? That's why the Bible say don't be unequally yoked. So don't say, oh, it was for the cross. Say no, because God didn't turn. When Jesus came on this earth, did he turn his back on people that needed him? Let's be real. Did he turn his back on people that needed him? And I'm not mad at you, Sean. I'm not mad. I think that was your name. I'm not mad at you. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? I'm just very passionate because did Jesus turn his back on people that needed him?
I don't think Jesus turned his back throughout the entire Bible. When do we ever see Jesus turn his back on the people that needed him the most? When, 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 when this man was preaching a sermon and they opened the freaking roof to, to tell him to go heal somebody. And they opened the roof to drop a man that was paralyzed. I think he was paralyzed. They dropped him down to heal him. Did Jesus say, no, I'm preaching right now. He has to wait. He didn't turn his back on. He said, he looked at him because of their, because of his friend's faith. He was healed. He was healed. Things you said, bro. is like, come on, fam. You like, come on now, bro. Seriously. I mean, we, the things you said is just straight blasphemy, bro. You literally just said everything that I, I'm like, bro, you said some wild, wild things. Be, before I came to Christ, the, the worst thing I ever said was I hate God. That's the worst thing I ever said. Worst thing I ever said before I came to Christ is I said that because I, I prayed and asked God to not allow me to get a whooping, but yet I got a whooping. And I said, I got like that. That's so stupid. But that's what I said. I was young. Didn't know what I was saying. Didn't know how that was blasphemy. Didn't know none of that. All I knew is there was a God. All I knew that I love God, but I was mad at him. You know what I'm saying? And you could be mad, but don't blaspheme God when you mad. Don't allow your anger to control you because your anger is just a foot. It's a footstool for the devil. The devil love when you angry at God. He love filling your mind with these negativity thoughts. He love doing all these different things. Don't allow the devil to, to, to lead you into damnation. Don't allow the devil to lead you down the wrong path, bro. God loves you. Jesus Christ loves you. He died on the cross for your sins. Seriously, you have a chance to repent. You have a chance to give your life fully to God. Come back, return back to him. You have a chance. You know what I'm saying? You have a chance, bro. But yeah, man, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get off this video. I think that was everything that I, you know, had to uh, had to cover in this video, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, subscribe to no notifications. Uh, yeah, pray for Sean, bro. I think that was his name, Sean. Yeah, pray for him, bro, because... <sighs> It, 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 it's it's ridiculous, man. And then, you know, when you look over and I'm looking, you know, I'm looking at the comment session right now and it's like, man, there's a lot of people that's agreeing with this type of mindset saying, oh man, I'm glad that this video is, 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 is good. It's helping me. It's just a lot of stuff, bro. And it's like, man, people are so lost, bro. So definitely pray for him. Uh, yeah, man, I love y'all. Hope you guys enjoy y'all day. Hit the like button, subscribe to no notifications. It's been your boy, Depend. I love y'all, man. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.